This is Wes Clark from the President of Lies, Linguistic Interrogation Expert Services. Investigating homicides is the pinnacle of police investigations. After spending 14 years in a major crime squad, I can tell you that some of these investigations can be fairly straightforward and lead to quick resolutions. However, others are going to find yourself in the midst of a made-for-TV mystery, bringing you down investigations and, and paths and patterns and leading to dead ends. Using investigative statement analysis can help detectives focus the investigation by avoiding going down the wrong paths, where time and money is lost and cases don't get closed properly. One thing to look for when you obtain a specific issue statement regarding a particular incident is the balance between the informa information before the incident and the information during the incident and the information after as well. In truthful statements, we have found that these three parts are more balanced, whereas in deceptive statements, there's a lot of unbalance and quite often the main issue is the, the, the reason people are there, but that often shrinks down to be the less significant part in, in statements of deceptive individuals. This makes sense, especially knowing that when most people are going to tell you the truth, they're just not going to tell you everything. So when they leave out information, it will often be reflected in the balance of their statement. If it's an alibi statement that you obtained and you're assessing, check where the individual began and ended their statement. Also, look for indicators of missing information within the individual's language as well. Do these indicators surround the time of the homicide? If so, this is a crucial point. Look to see if the individual is committed to what they're saying by using the pronoun I and by using past tense when describing a past event. Deceptive people have a tendency to remove themselves from what they say and write, which is identifiable in their language, but is often missed, even by seasoned homicide detectives. Also, look throughout the statement to see any conversations or communications mentioned between the subject and the victim. What is the context of the conversation? If there's more than one conversation mentioned in the context, is, is the context similar? Also, does the individual use the pronoun we during the conversation, then does that suddenly change? Which may indicate distancing or separation between the subject and the victim. Also, look to see how the victim was introduced in the statement, and if that changed throughout the individual's account. These are just some of the key tips and insights that our training courses provide regarding investigative statement analysis and how investigators can be helped through the complex challenges of homicide investigation.